Hi everyone, what you're about to listen to is an interview that I took in person while attending the Crypto Commons Gather Conference in Austria in August 2021. The conference itself was a wonderful experience where people of a lot of different backgrounds and political ideas were able to discuss openly and safely about how crypto can intersect with fostering the commons. What you'll notice from these interviews is that these differences in thought are sometimes apparent because we all come from different places. And what was honestly refreshing about the experience is that we could do it in a supportive environment. This is probably one of the most receptive audiences in crypto to socialism, which was really great for me. Also a heads up is that you may notice sometimes that the audio was clearly recorded in the house that we were all staying in, which wasn't the best place for recording, but we did the best that we could with what we had. A lot of the interviews will also likely feature in the documentary that I'm making about the world of crypto and its potential futures with a friend. A big reason I was able to make it to this conference was thanks to all the support I received from patrons. So if you find the work that I do important, I hope you'll consider helping out starting at $3 per month on patreon.com slash the blockchain socialist. So maybe to start off, just for people who don't know you, you can give a quick introduction of um, who you are and how we came to this point in time where we are sitting across from each other <laughs> for the Crypto Commons gathering. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll try that. So um, I'm Felix, I'm born in Vienna uh, 32 years ago and uh, I've been for a large part of my youth and, and early adulthood, I've been active in, in, in various social movements um, on the left and I pretty much always identified with uh, the political left. But then lately, um, well, lately, last, last decade or so was frustrating and I gradually uh, turned more and more away from, from activism at least, uh, protests on the street and stuff like that, uh, because it appeared really futile. Um, I studied uh, political science and uh, economics for bachelors and then international development studies uh, in Amsterdam for masters. And after that I did uh, peace research, so it was peace and conflict and, and peace negotiations. Um, his treaties, uh, I was working in that for about a year in, in Geneva. Well, found out I don't want to learn French and uh, there's absolutely no social life if you don't learn French. Um, so I quit and then um, that was, so that was the, the, the point of reorientation that was in mid or late uh, 2017 when we had the first uh, ICO boom and all these crazy ideas of crazy white papers being thrown out there with the vague promise to fulfill, maybe eventually, most of them died off, but I think that uh, the, main, the main value this, this wave brought was uh, opening up the space of possibilities and starting to explore that and also, um, also starting to explore obstacles that were not that clear before. And well, in that current, I, I, I decided to, to go back to university to apply for a PhD and do that with a, a, a proposal, a research proposal on blockchain as a digital movement, an approach that I, I since uh, dropped. But anyway, I got a position, I got some funding and I'm writing on crypto commons from a from perspective of uh, mainly political theory and political economy. Um, mm. And how we came here, well, two things. We did the same um, kind of event last year uh, with my brother who's into digital engineering, into drones, uh, machine learning and 3D print. But on the other hand, uh, I think a notable event was meeting, uh, meeting Jeff and Griff and Chris from the common stack in Thailand about two years ago and that really kicked off uh, good uh, collaborations. So we were writing on a paper last year together, seven of us, um, that has been published with uh, Frontiers in Blockchain and that brought us uh, together. So some, most of the, of the seven people were here uh, during the conference, but also other workshops and collaborations with mainly with Jeff um, from CommonStack and so last year I, I discussed this uh, quite a lot with him 
and with Julio, of course, um, who's my partner in organizing this event here. No. Did you just meet Jeff and Griff like randomly in Thailand or was it? No, no, it was planned. Um, so yeah, we have a travel budget. Uh, my university has a travel budget, which is nice. quite, quite decent. And they paid me a trip to Thailand. Yeah. For because yeah, I I saw somewhere randomly in, in their Telegram um channel in the Common Stack Telegram channel that they're having this retreat and everyone is welcome to join, and yeah, I took that uh, at face value and, and wrote them if I can come in a week. Yeah. And then I spent like two weeks with them. And at first it was I was coming from a quite critical angle and I I think. Some of my criticisms are still uh, valid, some others I, I, I withdrew or I, let's say I changed, I changed my idea of what they are actually doing and I think I also managed to, to induce some change uh, in their own uh, image of themselves. Um, but yeah, it was, it was rather random. So then was that, was that like the start of when you were starting to think about the commons as like a concept in the crypto yes. world? Yes, with the right. Stack? right. Before that, I was much more on, on digital activism, basically, um, you know, hacking as a, a mode of direct action, of political direct action right. so in autonomous tradition. Uh, I was thinking of, of building that, but then as crypto turned more and more into an industry, and even um, you know, like an industry and NGOs, if you want, uh, such as the Common Stack, uh, it didn't seem useful, at least, to use a social movement theory and methods for something that is not really a social movement and where the methods don't apply. Right. So I I dropped that and then was looking for yeah a new um, a new angle a new angle yeah a hook to 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 tell the story from something interesting there and that was for me definitely the use of, of, of commons, of the notion of the commons in a market setting and uh, this idea of build common marketplaces where people kind of compete over price but also collaborate and with, well, you know, like initially I was um, mainly skeptical because of the very liberal use of some uh, political and economic concepts that yeah. sometimes mean quite distinct things and lose their meaning when you throw them around wildly. And this is, uh, well, yeah, let's be honest, this is what the Comstack did at some, some points at least. And I had long discussions with Jeff and with Griff. Yeah. With Jeff, I think that was like seven, eight days. We were up until four each night discussing stuff. And I, have, I still have the recordings of that. I transcribed it all. Uh -huh. Did you have to like teach him uh, some Marxism a bit? Yeah, I tried to. Well, yeah, like, first of all, uh, they're mentioning value a lot. And what, what kind of value are you talking about? Exchange uh -huh. value or use value? And just this distinction helped them a lot in, in structuring their thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think like, um, yeah, it was funny the other day that when we were the conversation between Julio and Griff, you can sort of like uh, <laughs> I heard about it. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah. You can you can see the differences between like the the variety of different people who are within this movement, or you know, if we can call it that. Um, but uh, so then now I'm curious why you wanted to mix these two words, crypto plus commons. Like how how do those things? Intersect. Uh, sure. Um, I mean, that is, that's why I mentioned my political uh, history or, or history of activism. I was frustrated, right? Yeah. With uh, legacy forms of political activism. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I guess you can, you feel for me there. Um, so I was frustrated with that. And um, at the same time, I do think a potential is opening up here that crypto might not just be the uh, the panopticum and uh, the the surveillance hellhole that uh, some are sure building under many other criticisms as well uh, and crypto has terrifying potential uh, definitely but this is happening anyway and it's, uh, so again uh, the the <laughs> what I think 
needs to be done is at least work on an alternative and work on an alternative narrative to spread uh, the liberating uh, capacity of, of crypto um, to normal people and people that are, as me, feeling as leftists but are frustrated with how, how, thing, how bad things go and how, how bad things will go mm. in the foreseeable future. When you say how bad things will go, are you talking about, I, mean, I guess you're talking about one, like, general problems that we already know about, climate change. Yeah, yeah, that, that on one pressure is rising, pressure. the left is utterly fucked and is not getting out of that. Like the political party left mm -hmm. is in a dead end and yeah, I don't see that changing anytime soon. And I guess on the other side as well, if we're just looking at the crypto space, there's also, I mean, I guess what I like about what you're what you're saying, it's sort of my feeling is that um, yeah, if you do nothing about it, then obviously the entire technology is going to be used for ways that you know everybody already criticizes it about. Like if you just sit mm -hmm. there and just criticize, whereas if we come in and try to engage it and try to influence it to some degree at the very least and. Uh, it may even be a good spot where a lot of different left-wing, uh, you know, organizational practices could be utilized in for yeah. a, like a future. Then it's like a more useful. It's more. It's, it's a fairly useful use of your time, at least <laughs> you know, from a political standpoint. True that. If you think that crypto or blockchain is going to, um, even if you think it's bad, um, there's still a very high chance that it's going to enter into our lives and you know, whether or not we think it's bad or good. Yeah, I mean, it is the usual um, technophobia among leftists that I see playing out in a large part of them. Basically, me, I don't want that change. I'm just not going to look at it right. until it's there. Yeah, that doesn't stop the change. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah, I, I think, I think that, that holds for pretty much everyone here. We see the potential, we see also the terrifying potential, and we want to create uh, an alternative. Right. And I, offer an alternative. Yeah, one of the things that I will notice that uh, I have liked for the most part, I don't feel that anyone is really a techno utopian. Like, I don't hear anyone saying that, like, um, like the solutions will fix the problem. I think there's been. A, the majority uh, consensus has been like there is a need for some sort of like social cohesion and like social mm -hmm, movement behind mm -hmm, the technology. Mm -hmm. I think I mean okay, I wasn't around that much uh, four years ago, but in general, the discourse uh, shifted within crypto from a hard uh, techno uh, optimist or techno solutionist stance to some acknowledgement that yeah, the social is actually important and you can't uh, do social purely on chain. Right, yeah. You still need all of that around the fluffy, call it cultural script or yeah, plenty of, 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 of yeah. names to call that. But um, this has been for the last two, three years, more and more the discovery. Also that uh, when building these systems at some point and that is now, um, the focus shifts from technology to uh, social uh, attraction to social coordination. So, meaning community ma managers, uh, community leaders are now uh, well sought for. Um, meaning also social scientists that understand um, social dynamics better than uh, the often very naive and simplistic assumptions uh, devs might make uh, on their uh, user base. Right. Um, yeah, I think we will see that more in the coming years. No, yeah, it's interesting. Like, uh, if we just take Griff for example, I mean, he's top, and I mean, I noticed this in the, the DAO space. Anyways, the emphasis on culture has been an, an emergence, a new thing. Whereas mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. before, it was very much like, no, our govern, like governance will be on chain, and you will just like and vote, yeah. case know. closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, it's, it's, it's changing with with that realization um of course whether or not they will accept that they were you know wrong in the beginning you know whatever but i think they're accepting that uh, social is a lot more important than than they thought yeah
Yeah, and that's a good thing. And yeah, it's, this is also, you know, for me, it was, I have zero knowledge of, of, of coding, right? Can't write a line of code. And I don't, don't think I should be learning. I think I should be staying where I am, um, basically social sciences. Um, so when I first met the common stack, yeah, I was very skeptical uh, of their use of terminology. I was also skeptical and I still am of the uh, economics of their uh, augmented bonding curve or of the, let's say, implicit, is it really a promise? It's, well, it is an implicit promise of, of uh, speculative potential that is not just hypothetical. Um, and I tend to disagree that this will function in the long run, but yeah. there's only one way to find out now. Yeah. Because it really depends on, on, on your idea of human nature and drivers of decisions. And if they're right with uh, philanthropy being combinable with uh, speculative uh, behavior, or basically um, with the, you know, what, what they do is they say, uh, well, you have philanthropic people that might also want to do uh, make a profit. And why not combine that in one, um, like see, take both as a motivation, which is kind of impact investment but much more uh, speculative. I mean, what they, so, I don't know, are, are we going into like my kind of research and yeah, like sure. just I mean, mechanisms, we, ideas and stuff? Cause yeah, I, I would like to throw some out there. Yeah, for sure. So for example, um, the way I think about what the, the common stack does, did anyone explain their augmented bonding curve stuff? Uh, roughly? No, okay, no, 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 I can yeah. go very briefly through the augmented bonding curve and how I see that. Um, so augmented bonding curve, is a bonding curve is basically um, in the way the common stack uses it is a fractional reserve system. You have a smart contract, you put in a coin, it mints another coin and holds your uh, original coin in reserve, mm -hmm. just like a central bank, right? It issues new coin that is um, collateralized by, by others coin. Um, and you can, uh, the, 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 the curve is determined uh, by an equation, so you can shape it as you want. Um, the more tokens are ex in existence, so we have a y, there's a price, x, there's amount of tokens in existence, and then we say the first token costs one, the second to token costs two, and so on. And then when you go back on that curve, basically when you sell back to the contract, um, and the contract destroys them, first it issues them, then it redeem, redeems and destroys them, then you go back on that line to, right. in the end, uh, zero tokens, zero money in the, in the, in the reserve. And the, that is just generally a bonding curve, um, basically replacing a multi-sided market with a one-sided market where everyone interacts solely with uh, the, the smart contract in the middle, so you always have uh, a trading partner which is good, especially mm -hmm. in illiquid markets. Um, the augmentation uh, the common stack introduced is basically a tax mechanism that taxes either upon entry or upon uh, exit. So either uh, you know, as you have that one central trading agent, you can control the trades or you can tax these trades. So whenever you sell tokens, to the uh, to the smart contract uh, and they are redeemed and destroyed. You do not get everything you should get, but it's, it's some taxes taken out. It could be like one percent, or let's keep it low, so so it doesn't really. It's not too much friction in the system, but anyway, this uh, the tax fuels a funding pool. There is a separate pool from the reserve pool, and um, token holders have voting rights over the funding pool. So the, the idea is that you gather an economy or you gather agents around uh, an idea of doing good, doing something for a commons. That could be, for example, the first iteration is the token engineering commons. That it means uh, building tools, open source tools for token engineers. Um, and the funding pool is uh, used by uh, token holders or token holders can vote on the funding pool to be used for uh, various uh, purposes or various things that serve uh, the shared purpose of forwarding uh, token engineering commons. 
And that could also be a beach commons. Let's clean up that beach and let's buy, I don't know, whatever you need for beach, <laughs> beach cleaning, right? right. Um, and then you could have, for example, people living around that beach, uh, the stakeholders uh, can buy some tokens, have uh, voting power over the funding pool, and whenever someone leaves uh, this setting, they pay a tax to the funding pool, so some money comes in, you can use that on the beach. That could be, for example, for you know, I don't know, a summer village somewhere by a river. And there, there are plenty of, of, of settings where you could have this, and it's nice to play around a bit with it. Well, I think what this is, I mean, it's a governance token, okay, it's, you can call it whatever, but I, what I think, or in my perspective, what that really is, it is a bet on the effective capacity of an idea, or what I would call a mimetic derivative. So mimetic from memes, but in a broad sense, right, any notion, any idea, let's clean up that beach, improve the token engineering commons, whatever, all of that are mimetics and um, they have effective capacity. So they, they vary in how much social traction they gain, how far and how fast they circulate uh, in, in social groups and how strongly people feel towards them. Mm. So um, affect is interesting because um, the autonomous school uh, works a lot on, on the value theory of affect basically going from labor theory of value to an affect theory of value. Labor theory of value is very objective, or tries to be as objective as possible. Affect theory of value is completely opposite. It is um, basically the aggregated uh, subjectivity of all uh, participants in a system. And um, that really fits uh, networked uh, economies yeah. and that really fits um, the whole crypto scene because in the crypto scene how tokens gain in value is not because they're being used in some production right now but because you have hypes, you have speculation on the effective capacity. Right. And you basically you spec if you speculate, right, you speculate on how many other people will feel strongly positively towards that token and will thus buy in. You do not really, at least now in crypto, speculate on, oh, the production of wheat is going to be higher next year, so we will need more of that currency to do that. No, that's not how it works, right? right. Um, so you have this strong match of, of autonomous uh, theoretical elements and crypto. There are many more that I, I want to explore more. Yeah. I, am, I also hope that we will have more uh, academic uh, participants from that field next year here. So that's an explicit invitation for all <laughs> the autonomous that did not come this year, please come. There's could work you, to could, do. Could you explain a bit um, what is uh, autonomism? <laughs> As In few fun. words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's really, it's really interesting um, school of thought that, I mean, I myself, I feel like I need to learn more about it. But um, it is one of the schools of thought that, for example, Vangelis, um, early in the conference when he was mapping out the different political strains mm -hmm. within the... Uh, the crypto common space um, and the crypto space in general is he included like autonomous Marxists and post Marxists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but if you look up, at least whenever I looked up like autonomous Marxism, it was not very easy to find information about it actually. Yeah. Well, so one problem is that it's not one coherent uh, um, structure of theory, uh, it's rather a few um, elements that are in loose connection and not all of uh, the autonomous necessarily share all of them. And it has also quite some history. So it's, um, autonomous thought started with uh, workerism in Italy in the in the 60s. That was a movement of, of young scholars to go into factories to align with workers um, and yeah, be organic uh, intellectuals for the workers' movement. However, um, in, Olivier, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, in the 70s, basically, workers' movement failed, um, capitalism mm, reshuffled, reorganized itself, decentralized production, broke up mm, big units into smaller units, thus uh, cracked down on worker power. Yeah. Um, and basically, autonomists said, so that's the shift from uh, operaism, workerism to post-workerism. They basically said, okay, fuck the unions, um, at least the big ones. This is not leading anywhere. The industrial um, worker 
is a dying species and is losing uh, its, its power, is not the main subject of revolution anymore. Um, the coming revolution will be one of general intellect, so that's an interesting concept. Yeah. Will be, so the coming, or could be, right? That right. They put their the eggs in a different basket, and that was the rise of cultural workers, of care workers, of, of all that subjectivity, right? That is now affect, right. uh, or that drives uh, affect, um, the value uh, connected to affect. Um, and that was like 50 years ago, right? So that shift already occurred pretty early. Um, but it's, then, it's, it's like a movement that is fairly, uh, it's fairly present in, in Italy. Right, that's uh, what I want to say. Um, you still have a lot of um, a lot of squats in Italy that pretty much all, not all of them, but most are in that uh, autonomous sphere rather than in organized uh, Marxist groups. Um, they, you know, a lot about is about um, basically escaping um, the system's attempts of commodification of everything. Mm -hmm and building basically building islands in the sea of capitalism mm -hmm. and that of course resonates with the commons right where you yeah, also yeah. want to build these protected islands and maybe connect them over time but where market relations cannot penetrate which is also why um, crypto commons are a strange breed right yeah because you invite the market under certain conditions there and you don't right. just try to exclude it um yeah, shall we continue the excursion to autonomy? I don't know. Right. I mean, there, there, are, there are interesting concepts. The general intellect sure, yeah. is the knowledge commons, basically, that we share and um, that over time, so this is a concept already developed by Marx somewhat, or mentioned right. by Marx, over time, um, our mm, productive, uh, the means of production become more and more immaterial and right. more and more our brains. Right. Yeah. On the one hand, and patents on the other, right? So you have you have this idea of common knowledge, a common knowledge base that we grow together and that we draw on, and that uh, allows us also to to escape complete uh, valorization and commodification in a way. But at the same time, um, well, capitalism has its own ideas on that. Right? That might be IP. Um, that might be human capital instead of gen uh, general intellect. <laughs> you can play that game there. Um, well, the autonomists also have good uh, good thought on the question of money of the commons. So quite interesting uh, experiments also in, in a social center, a squad in Milano called Macau. Um, that has been around for a decade or so and it's the, as far as I remember, it was 2014 that they had, uh, first they were visited by, by some bit Bitcoin devs at the time with uh, Vitalik Buterin oh. among them, uh, yeah. staying there for a month and getting them into the idea of crypto. Then they had uh, several meetings on, on creating money for the commune uh, that became common coin. Um, they're still experimenting. Yeah. Uh, they are connected to and Dine, Dine.org was, was doing um, right. some stuff with them a couple of years ago. So there is, and well, that's another trait of autonomists. They have a different relationship to technology than uh, classical Marxists, right. uh, which yeah. is, well, they, they see this ambiguity and play with it, uh, you know, of, of technology always having terrifying and liberating potential. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So they would actually, from within left, they, they are probably the most open to, to what we're working and, and on here. And they were involved fairly early. Yes. It sounds like even as well. Yes, yes. Um, so then maybe, I guess, considering all of these different, um, I mean, I guess we could call them contradictions a bit in, in, in this space. And, you know, I think that's, that's okay. Um, what now, I, I think maybe now we're at, the end almost of the conference. So I'm curious what your definition is based on this conference. Like, what does the crypto commons mean to you now? In the end, uh, to me, the crypto commons is a banner under which um, people deeply concerned about mechanisms of the capitalist system and not just fiat money and uh, <laughs> inflation and money printer, <laughs> uh, but people that have a deeper thought on that can gather 
without using old um, old uh, banners of the left. But mm -hmm. I mean, come on, most of the people here are implicit leftists, right? You know, um, they have often they have problems uh, being explicit leftists because of yeah. Like party politics that they, they associate politics yeah. with and, and they exclusively think in party politics if we say politics and then yeah who wants that <laughs> yeah, yeah I think if, if people listen to like other interviews um, that we've done so far the Griffith Comes Gather I mean like some people will say like you know why do we need to use the word socialism or like you know communism capitalism we don't need to use it you know we just need to do and then they begin to basically describe a socialist system <laughs> yeah which is like very funny and there's kind of, i mean yeah th there are contradictions in there and we but at the same time i don't think any type of libertarian movement is going to have complete you know logical centralization for you know the exact thing that everybody has in their head and what the vision is it's always going to be some slight differences there's always going to be people sure. going to use words slightly differently and may not like some words and prefer other words because of how they personally feel. Sure, and, and in the end that's fine, right? Right, the point is that you just move forward. Yeah, what, what we want to do is uh, shape, uh, shape this technology, the development of these technologies and shape their social uh, interpretation and use. That's what we want to do and uh, we do that under the banner of Crypto Commons because that already puts us in opposition to private property um, and the usual Right. The usual game. Um, yeah, same way. Uh, same way. Uh, same moment. It's uh, it's uh, it's only implicitly political, which allows many more people, especially in in right. the them in, in tech field, it allows them to to enter without uh, getting overly political. Right. For now, but it allows them to have beers with Marxists and like chill and yeah. In a more casual setting, talk about uh, politics, <laughs> right? Than in like right. a declarative way, I guess. Yeah, but so coming back to the question you were asking, what do crypto comments mean for me? Yeah. Well, on one hand, it is a banner that we're gathering under, and it's a narrative that uh, I want to develop and push for. I think uh, I think this conference um, is really important for for getting that start in a more coordinated fashion among the people, or the groups here. Also, uh, definitely uh, with this documentary, I mean, that could have a huge outreach to, to many people that are, haven't ever heard of Crypto Commons. Right. right? Yeah. That are not in our tiny Twitter bubbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to grow the niche. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think uh, this gathering was a starting point for that. Yeah, for, absolutely. For a new phase uh, in which we yeah, should really roll out our narrative and, and start attracting more people, more thinkers um, from different uh, different backgrounds also. Yeah. More political activists, more academics. No, I, I told you this before, but uh, you're doing God's work <laughs> by hosting this conference and giving it a start. So thanks a lot for, uh, for setting it up. <laughs> um, so has the conference itself gone as like you expected it to go? Yeah, yeah, pretty much so. Okay. I mean, I, I have some experience with uh, organizing small events like this in rather informal settings, which is what I like doing most. Um, you know, the problem was more, I, I always knew how it was going to be if enough people come and good people come. But the problem was mainly how to explain that. Like, I couldn't just say, come, it's going to be super nice. Yeah. I had to, to, to give people some idea, whether true or not, of what would be happening here. So, for example, we had to make a full program, although we knew that the program is more uh, an idea of how it could go and that probably by the third day we would rearrange the whole program to fit actual needs on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and that, this is pretty much what happened. I was happy that it did take place that, that at some point we could, you know, we were relieved from that, uh, from that um, obligation of, of always 
maintaining the structure and stuff. Um, there's, there's been like a good amount of self organization. I yeah, would say. exactly. Like same same for the house, for cooking, cleaning, all of that. I mean that worked pretty well from the, from the beginning, and I I I definitely bet on that. So yeah. it was a bet, and if people hadn't been cooperative, they would have been annoying. <laughs> would have been yeah. Annoying, but then I mean, with whom else but a bunch of commerce can you try that and can you count on them actually getting yeah. getting how to live a commons yeah. for I a week? The, the particular nature of the stuff of conference was that it wasn't like a I didn't feel like I was purchasing, no, like a no, spot no, 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 like you were not, you were not purchasing a spot, right. you had to apply, right, for the right to purchase a spot. But we wouldn't sell you a ticket without uh, reading your uh, application and or CV before, because we we are limited. Uh, we have limited space here, right? It's, I think much more than fifty people at a time here doesn't make much sense. Mm -hmm. We'll see next year. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> will be difficult, but um, we really like the main target was get the right people here, not get as much people as possible, and definitely not earn money with it. Mm -hmm. um, Having some funds is nice, and we have uh, a lot of plans on how to use them. But uh, the purpose was always bringing together the right people, and I think we achieved that. Um, we so we have to, to, to let's say that uh, the usual, uh, or for me, my Twitter sphere, right? The usual uh, crypto bubble of of blockchain for good and so on, the common stack and and their universe and and several others. But then I think one of the main one of the things I'm happy for and, and I think it worked out really well is that we brought uh, community community currency people in and that there appears to be some some interaction the old growing. School. The old school and the new school, right? And you know, even just that, that Matt said he's gonna be uh, joining the new school uh, for a bit. Yeah, that's, that's I've, cool. Yeah, I've noticed that Matthew's uh, he's opened up a little bit. Yeah, Come yeah, down. yeah, right. <laughs> And if he's just wrapping his idea in new words, yeah, yeah. calling it tokens. <laughs> yeah, if it works, that's, that's cool. If we get uh, mutual credit uh, experiments more into that space, yeah, definitely. We're gonna have, we can have some well, theoretical and, and practical conversations of different theories of money, of monetary systems, and that's badly needed. Um, else, uh, I'm happy that we had so I'm happy for all participants, right? They're all great. I'm just uh, looking at the, for the unusual parts now that we brought in uh, Andreas mm, from the Coop, uh, Fair Coop movement in, in Germany. Yeah. Um, that is a real good link. And, and the other um, uh, Coop projects that uh, Julio got in um, through his contacts. Um, yeah, it's been... Plenty more good participants. Uh, I would like to say what I what I think was missing a bit, like if if any downsides, I would have liked to see more uh, academics that uh, present, you know, that give good presentations, coherent ones, structured presentations of half an hour to forty five minutes, and that have an impact over the day. So I'm not thinking about summaries of this. Of the field and so on, we usually know better than an outside observer. Uh, but rather, one idea that that changes dynamics here. And I, the problem is that you need good speakers for that, and it's very subjective, right? Um, but yeah, um, if 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 we could have academics who could um, define the different types of value very well. For yeah, people. that Sometimes that would be definitely a thing. I mean, we're going to have a glossary next year and going to oh, develop nice. that and try to, to, to do that. Yeah, that would be great. Just some in the first days, some glossary work, some main concepts. And please do not confuse that with that. You know, yeah. um, someone giving an overview of, of commons uh, theory and different, well, commons as institutions, commons as resources uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, philosophers. Oh. Yeah, these kind of academics. If if anyone hears that and, and, and thinks they might fit, please contact me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have about three hundred and fifty days 
until the next gathering, so... <laughs> <laughs> Have you already started planning the next one? Yeah, I'm, I'm planning the next one since the first day. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, I'm curious to hear from you. you, you mentioned it a little bit, but you've done, you know, based on your research, how do you think this particular niche of the crypto commoners, how does it differ from, like, the traditional, I mean, just like the, the crypto world in general. How, how, how do you see those differences? Some people have said it being like, some people have said leftists, other people have been shying away from that, but I agree. Oh yeah, I mean, implicit, implicit leftism definitely, I mean, in terms of values, um, there is some uh, concern for, for the collective, or um, there is some, Understanding that, well, if we have a world built on volunteerism, we need to encourage people to actually volunteer for things. Right? Like if we stick with the, the, the libertarian uh, approach to it, but then realize that, okay, if we all just uh, exclusive, uh, if we all act exclusively on our own self interest, this is going to be a shit show. Um, right. so you have these, that, that would be great, right? Libertarian, um, by values, but at the same time sees a uh, capitalist hellhole problem. Right. Mm, then, I mean, you have a lot of uh, visionaries or, or, or idealists, I guess, in this space. Mm. Um, more than maybe in, in blockchain broader field of blockchain. Or let's say I'm, I'm actually thinking about, uh, let's say, DeFi degens that are usually exclusively concerned about price uh, price movement. Um, there hasn't been a single mention of price this entire conference. Yeah. I saw <laughs> I saw a, a Holochain chart yesterday as a meme. That was the first chart I saw, or talk of price. That was, I don't know where, where, where coins went in the last week or so, I have no idea. <laughs> And it doesn't really matter, right, <laughs> uh, for this here. Um, one thing uh, that, uh, yeah, you, you, you can cut that as you want anyway, right? Uh, that I, I, I have the feeling, uh, a thought that I've been developing the last two days. I'm not sure, though, how it fits with our agenda in this documentary and towards our sponsors, uh, if we have any. But that is this idea of, Okay, there is a lot of enthusiasm here and uh, a lot of optimism, and we're all quite high on 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 what we're doing. But at least in in financial terms, we're all high on big big capital entering a, a promising market and uh, taking strategic bets. And this is in the end where all that money is coming from. Is not magically created this value, you know, it is cash, the fiat inflows it's, it's that capital. we sell our tokens for in the end. But somewhere this, this uh, fiat has to come from and that is from big capital. And not saying that this is a bad thing, this is happening all the time in different uh, emerging industries that you have this upstream. And when you are in a real upstream, that is global shifts in economy. And when you're in that financial upstream, you can hardly fuck up at all. Everything becomes incredibly easy. And yeah, as you see here, right? You have so many new uh, collaborations started, uh, things being funded. This is just because money is here in abundance. And we all kind of know that. Yeah, we all would like to have more budget, um, of course, but compared to any other uh, creative experimental field, uh, money's lagging. Yeah, money is lacking everywhere except for here because we're experimenting with money, right? Or in a way. Um, and that, yeah, again, this is happening with or without us. We can just as well swim on that uh, upstream and, and do cool things with it. But I think um, we should also be aware that we are in an upstream of big financial capital and they are, uh, well, 
controlling from afar where this uh, journey goes. We can try to subvert it somewhat, and we should try to subvert it, and to, to on one hand create our niches and try to impact the whole direction a bit, create a counter narrative um, to their uh, purely financial narrative. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would like to in future see more open conversations about this. Mm. Right, it's, it's not a. Many people would be, I think, would not have, would be uncomfortable maybe with that. Yeah. Everyone, I guess, kind of knows that it's true. We don't talk about it much. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just we have to be aware of that. And um, on the other hand, I would also like to say what we are doing here, every one of us, be it you guys, be it me, any of the projects out there, is creating so incredibly much value for the big chains and in the end for big capital that is investing in this vision. Because we are all developing this vision further. We are building new projects on top of the main chains or on competitors. But in the end, we all of this fuels the ecosystem. We work on translating uh, a technical narrative into a social narrative, uh, which opens up to so many more uh, participants in these economies. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, so we have, we're looking for funds, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for funds and we're going to be subversive about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, that, I, I think like some, some donors also appreciate that, that, you, you know, groups wanting re to, to retain independence and, and some radical thought, uh, for example, they, can I tell that? Yeah. Uh, it's been, it's, that was in 2014, so I'm allowed to talk about it. I think, so okay. yes. um, back then I was involved in a um, political group in, in Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina, and uh, we applied for 20k funding for a house project that was somewhat similar to here. It was a different theme, right? It was uh, left, uh, left wing politics in, in, in a post-war, post-conflict uh, country with a lot of issues. But anyway, we applied for uh, 20k to Soros, uh, to, to... What's that foundation called? Which one? The Open Society Foundations. Right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. And we told them, yeah, we want your money, but we do not want any deliverables. Because that's... Like, we're not an NGO. We're a movement, just give us money. In the end. <laughs> Some of, and they did. They they actually liked that direct uh, approach, and I, mm. yeah, I do hope that uh, potential sponsors would also see our uh, supporters, would see that we are doing uh, something beneficial here, and that uh, too much, uh, too many deliverables and a too tight uh, project, or you know, too much involvement by a specific chain would hurt this rather than than support it. Like, I don't want any any chain uh, yeah. taking over this place. Yeah, I think it, it should be neutral ground between different uh, approaches and, and projects. I think making like the crypto commons uh, as a part of something that other chains sort of want in on, but then being in competition with one another, like so putting the crypto commons into a sort of advantageous position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. would, you know, sort of encourage the money to flow and retain the independence. Right. Sure. And I think, so another thought, um, it's a simple one, but I've been developing on, on how, to, how to talk about this here, what, I, what we're actually doing, what I'm doing with the house and what service I'm providing with this house to the community, is that we're giving um, a dispersed uh, decentralized community that mainly communicates and knows each other or via digital means, we give them a temporary home in which um, they can have all the social interaction, all, um, all the fun, all that serendipity uh, that creates uh, great ideas. Yeah. Uh, can have that for a week or a month and then uh, go back to their usual pace of work uh, in, in which this is simply not possible. Um, I do think 
especially after or still during COVID, uh, this is immensely valuable and important for, for, for people. And this is also feedback that I'm getting that the physical space that is informal and uh, where it is quite clear that you work together as a group and as a commons, and that you preserve the space as a commons. Um, it practice is, it in your like. Yeah, right, right. And that, that's, another, yeah. that's another thing. We talk about commons all the time, but a large part of commons and of commoning is in the physical. Yeah. And, and that feeling of community develops so much stronger in the physical when you share food. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think I would really like to offer different communities in, in Europe um, a temporary home. Nice, yeah. I mean, I will probably stay here at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think um, it has been a, a really interesting conversation. Is there anything else that you, that you want to mention before we head up? Not for now. You're wrong. Oh, right. <laughs> sure, there are plenty of things missing. We were jumping around wildly, but it was, that's good. Um, yeah, it won't be the last time that we talk. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, then maybe to, to end it, you can, you can just share with us the, where people can keep up with you and your work. Yeah, you can find us on www.crypto-commons.org. Um, well, site is not very far developed yet, um, but you should at some point see an invitation for next year's gathering. However, um, well, I think we're not going to do a lot of, a whole lot of advertising uh, yeah. for next year. As I said, we have limited spots here and pretty much everyone wants to come back. So <laughs> it's going to be a scramble for the remaining tickets anyway. Yeah. Um, and else, yeah, we have a Twitter account um, that is Gathering Crypto. Hmm. And you have a Twitter account. I have a Twitter account, yeah, that's Felix Fritsch uh, too. And you can follow me and see that I never post anything except for one paper I publish a year or so. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll include that paper in the, uh, in the description so people can check it out. Yeah, do check it out. It's, 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 uh, it's quite interesting paper, quite packed with a lot of different... One of the first of its kind. Yeah, yeah, can say that. Right. Also so dense and packed with a lot of different stuff that you can't really put it anywhere anyway. Yeah, that's true. But it was, it was a fun exercise. <laughs> Alright, cool. Thanks. Cool, thank you. Yeah.